Hi, brothers and sisters. This is Neil Jepson. It's become a time of team teaching. Nearly all of our teachers have a team teacher, and if you don't, you probably will sometime soon. It's just the nature of the world that we live in today, and it helps protect adults, but it also really blesses the lives of young people. And today I'd like to give you a little bit of instruction on how to be an excellent team teacher. When I was a team teacher, I was partnered with someone who was extraordinary. He had all of the talents that I desired. And I felt concerned that I would never be able to measure up. And that turned most of the time into frustration and jealousy um, rather than striving for excellence. And I remember coming across this verse in verse 15 where it says, Has thine eye become evil because I am good? And on that day, I had to answer that it had. I had become jealous and angry because God had been good to somebody else. Every single one of us are here for a purpose. Each of us have been given divine talents and abilities. And when we are called, we are called for those purposes, not for other purposes. We needn't be frustrated if someone else has a different skill or is better at something than we are. Our eyes cannot become evil because God is good to someone else. So let's get to some practicalities of what it means to be a team teacher. While one is teaching, the other teacher might be able to bring the students out and just chat with them for a second about how seminary is going, asking them these questions. How are things going with your personal scripture study? And allow them to talk and check in with you. Ask them if they're marking off their progress in the Seminaries and Institutes app. You know, you can ask them how you and your team teacher can make things more meaningful and help the students build faith in Jesus Christ. And of course, you and me should ask how they personally could make seminary more meaningful. This also provides you a chance to chat with them about some of the things that perhaps they need to correct about their behavior in seminary. And of course, praise them on what they're doing well. These conversations don't need to be long, and they certainly don't need to be isolated from the rest of the class. Just find a place where you can quietly talk with the student without disturbing the other students. What are you supposed to do when your team teacher's teaching? Here's three suggestions. When things are quiet, don't answer the question. Sometimes I've noticed that teachers are um, starting a conversation between each other rather than with the students when the students are quiet. For example, I saw a teacher ask a question and it was dead silent in class. And the, and the other teacher, trying to help, help the teacher that was teaching, answered the question and the other teacher responded to that teacher and pretty soon they were just having a conversation back and forth and the, teach, the students were just observing or not paying attention at all. So it might be good for a team teacher to say, hey, I'm not sure I understand your question. I'm not going to answer it, but I'm not sure I understand your question. Will you ask it one more time? That will help the students continue to be engaged and, and continue to have the burden on them. As a team teacher who's not teaching, you should watch for it and, and correct unfocused behavior. I've seen excellent teaching as they've walked around and just tapped kids on the shoulder and asked them to put their phone away and encouraged them to be all in and, and very focused. That's your job if you're not actually doing the instruction that day. Finally, I would say that there are lots of students in our classroom that need help. Be that teacher who goes around and helps them. When you are a team teacher who's not teaching, you and me can never be passive. Suggestion number two. Be your brother's keeper. Um, you may find team teaching easy, but a lot of a lot of our team teachers don't and, and find it to be kind of a struggle. And I am asking all of you to ask your partner if there is anything you can do to make their life better or easier, and then listen. I provide this suggestion because we do hear every once in a while that team teachers aren't seeing eye to eye. No one is being rude. No one is being unkind. But there are differences in opinions, and because you and me are trying so hard to be polite, we don't often bring those things up. And it may be that you and your team teacher have a conflict that you don't even know about. Ask the question, what can you do to be a better partner? You might ask your teacher to watch you teach and then provide you with some feedback and then apply it, right? Try to be better. You've got another adult in the classroom who's willing to help you be a better teacher. Man, take advantage of that. You might look for personal strengths of your team teacher and then provide genuine compliments. Help them to feel and be encouraged in this work that is very challenging. Suggestion number three, please remember that this is the Lord's work and you will be able to see his hand in it. 
You have been called by God, and your team teacher has been called by God. Please keep that in mind. And as you and me bring different things to the table, God will use us to fulfill his purposes. Seek and pray for unity. Work hard to obtain it. That's what Zion's all about. Be the best team teacher you can be. Follow these principles, and you and me can continue to leave a significant impact on the youth and young adults that we're trying hard to serve. <laughs>